Bunnies. Cute, fluffy, silly, harmless little bunnies. Sorry, did I say harmless? I meant hardcore, heavy metal, full force killing machines. <laughs> This animated series borrows from the simple formula of madness combat, which itself has now inspired several generations of animators over the last 20 years, not only to create their own animations in the madness style, or often dropping their own original characters into that universe. There are so many examples out there, but one of the standouts that took its time to infuse its own sense of timing and style, pulling from other inspiring action movies and games, adding its creator's unique perspective, this quickly and easily came to stand on its own. This incredibly popular series of bunnies killing bunnies is none other than the aptly titled Bunny Kill. How's it going everyone? My name's Graham and welcome to Flashlight, the series where I look at all things Flash related. If fast-paced 2D platforming action combat is what you're after, check out Magenta Horizon. In this spectacle fighter inspired souls like, you have full control, with all attacks and moves being available from the start. Explore vast spaces, master deadly combos, and take down insane bosses. Practice makes perfect, and you can strive for that coveted triple S rank. Act 1 is available to play on Steam for free right now. There is hours of gameplay there. Please wishlist Magenta Horizon to directly support me and the channel, and try out Act 1 for yourself and let us know what you think. I'm still working on the Madness Flashlight video part 2, it's a much larger video than this, covering as much of the Madness fandom as I possibly can. And while that wasn't ready in time for today, I thought a very suitable replacement would be a video focusing on one of the most prominent Madness fan series ever made. One that maintains that spirit and immediately identifiable frame by frame style, but in every possible way has worked to distinguish itself from Madness. This video is a look at Bunny Kill's inspiration, creation, impact, and legacy. It wasn't long after the debut of the original Madness Combat that users started creating their own fan animations. Many of them were simplistic and stayed very directly rooted in what Madness creator Matt Jolly, aka Crinkles, had established in terms of style, tone, and action. But after only four official Madness animations and one game, coming a full two years before the first Madness Day elevated the the series to a new peak fandom, one animator rose above the rest. This was Motus, at the time going by the Glacius, who submitted the first bunny kill to Newgrounds on January 7th, 2005. A total of five bunny kills were made over the following six years, before being officially retired in 2013. Ever since laying the series to rest, it's somewhat been looming over Modus's head. He knows the series is popular and what it meant to the fans, but the creation of the series and the weight of that popularity led to serious burnout. He somewhat jokingly refers to himself in his Twitch profile as a recovering animator. He's obviously making light of it, but the series caused him a lot of anguish and he doesn't really like dragging those memories back up. So I truly can't express my gratitude that he was willing to partake in an interview and answer some of my questions. Also a huge thank you to fans and viewers who submitted questions along the way. I'll be including clips from that interview throughout, and I would encourage users to post any follow-up questions here in the comments. Modus has found new communities on Twitch and Discord, and doesn't really want those to get swept away and overwritten by the old bunny kill fandom. So please be under understanding of that personal space, and respect his wishes to not flood his chats with bunny kill related things. I find it's rare for a submission that was so unabashedly inspired by another series to emerge from underneath that shadow. Certainly not this quickly, yet almost immediately, users saw Bunny Kill's quality and uniqueness and appreciated how it wore that inspiration on its sleeve. 
Rather than hiding from it, Bunny Kill was instantly recognizable as being Madness with Bunnies. And Modus would include Inspired by Madness directly in the end of animation credits. Maybe Modus accepting that origin made it easier for the viewers to embrace as well. The very first Bunny Kill managed to grab both the daily and weekly first awards. Something Crinkles wasn't able to achieve until his third Madness combat. Not to undermine either series, Madness had to walk before these bunnies could dash around the screen like absolute lunatics. While Modus admits some were unable to see Bunny Kill as more than a ripoff, the majority admired it on its own merits. Viewers praised its style, detail, and most of all, the twisted fun of seeing cute little bunnies splattering each other on the floor. From a decade-old reply over on Newgrounds, part of me always feels bad because of how similar my style is to Madness. Sometimes I wish I had gone for a more original Original style. After which Modus goes on to share he felt somewhat guilty that the Inspired by Madness is missing in the credits of some of the later installments. But I think Modus can rest easy knowing that he had fully eclipsed that inspiration as the series expanded and evolved. Bunny Kill's origins may have been inspired by something else, but it long ago came into its own. Prior to the first entry, Modus and his friend Rajanin teamed up to make the JASF series, standing for Just Another Stick Fight. I really love that Modus's primary two series on Newgrounds are both based around leaving his mark in two major styles of fighting-based web animations, Madness and Stick Fights. In JASF, Modus took on the frame-by-frame -frame fighting, while Rajanin contributed the techno soundtrack. Even the very first of these makes strong use of visual effects, superpowers, and sound effects to sell the action. Contrary to its title, it may have been a mostly generic stick fight, but it did prove that Modus had a talent for staging action, presenting new ideas, and delivering a polished product. And he would have only been a teenager at the time. JASF was my first animation. I learned a lot that I used in my future movies. Lots of basic stuff like using layers and so on. I personally enjoyed in the third installment when the weapons become more varied, and he added the unique visual of counting respawns, as if we were watching live gameplay of some stick team deathmatch. Work was started on a fourth JASF, but it was set aside to make Bunny Kill instead which itself is neither just another stick fight nor just another madness combat. When asked by a fan why bunnies, Modus shared, they are cute, and originally the contrast between the cuteness and violence is what drove the series forward. Over time, the focus shifted from that contrast to better, more inventive fighting choreography instead. Rather than covering these episodes chronologically to look at how the series evolved and improved over time, as that is visually apparent after just a few seconds of seeing both the first and last bunny kills, I want to instead focus on what inspired the series, how it took shape, while including Modus's personal retrospective on the series. I think the most reasonable starting point would be to look at Bunny Kill's inspiration. What led to Modus going against the trend of Madness fan animations, copying that look and style very exactly, to instead create his own unique series? It was originally just a test animation. I never planned to release it. All I did was animate a white bunny character dropping from the top of the screen and killing an enemy. I showed it to my friends, and they thought it was amazing and hilarious and wanted me to keep going with it, which I did. Eventually, it evolved into a full Flash movie and then a full series. Yes, the first part of Bunny Kill 1 that you see is me just practicing animation using body parts instead of stick figures. And I left it in. It's so funny to me that a series that has since become so popular and iconic in its own right spawned from a simple animation test. It's honestly rather fitting, as that's how Crinkle's own silly first little marshmallow madness felt. 
It's also been a continuing legacy of the Madness series, where newcomers to Newgrounds upload four-second animation tests using Madness sprites. Let this be a lesson to those animators. Your little tester likely will get bland. Instead, work to flesh it out a little further and challenge yourself to do something different. That extra effort could lead to you stumbling into a series all of your own. With Bunny Kill starting from such a casual place, Modus never felt a need or pressure to distinguish himself from Madness in that first episode. That distinction instead arose organically with each new installment. I never saw them being that similar in the first place, aside from the character's torso shape. I feel like I delivered my own animation style very early on, which was completely different from Madness. This is why their similarity was rarely even a thought in my head. I imagine an obvious question fans would have, especially considering Crinkles himself was a very open and adamant supporter of the Bunny Kill series, was whether or not the two had ever discussed collaborating on a Madness Bunny Kill crossover. I think we had one private chat about the possibility for a project where we'd combine Bunny Kill and Madness, but that never came to be. Our animation styles would be too different to make it look good, in my opinion. Crinkles animates at a high frame rate. I animate around 22 to 24 frames per second. As an aside, Modus largely used abnormal frame rates. If you went out to a movie in theaters right now, it would be in 24 frames per second. Online animators, back in these early days especially, would often work in 12 frames per second, meaning there are half as many new images per second. So while you'd only have to do half the work to communicate an action, it would come out looking noticeably choppier. There are half as many images playing in sequence within that single second. Modus originally used an unheard of 17 frames per second. I cannot express enough how uncommon and random of a choice that feels. With Bunny Kill 1, he had switched to 18, which is halfway between that 12 and 24, slightly more common. But then rather than jumping ahead to the more standardized 24 or 30 frames per second, he slowly ramped things up per animation, gradually building to that 24 frames per second used in Bunny Kill 5. So that mismatched frame rate was actually a major hurdle that worked against him ever teaming up directly with Crinkles. Crazy how something so simple can stop a collaboration like that dead in its tracks before it even began. And beyond that, more stylistically, his characters are constantly in flowy motion. Mine spend a lot of time standing still in various poses between movements. It just wouldn't look good in action. I'm actually genuinely shocked that across the many madness days, no fans have ever taken this on themselves. Throw Hank and Snowball into a ring together, either to duke it out against each other going sword to sword, or to team up against some larger threat. But I digress, maybe someone will feel inspired to create something like that for next year's Madness Day. Looking at the credits and descriptions of the old Bunny Kill submissions, you will recurrently see that same name, Rajunin. This is the same person who worked with Modus on Just Another Stick Fight. He is someone Modus has known since first grade, and is credited with primarily pushing Modus to upload Bunny Kill in the first place. In Modus's younger days, before his own English was stronger, Rajanin took on uploading these early animations to Newgrounds, filling in the descriptions and responding to comments and reviews on Modus's behalf and mirroring the real-world friendship and emergent partnership of Crinkles and Cheshire, Rajunin was also a techno-style composer. And since the first Bunny Kill movie blew up so much, we thought it would be fun working together to also get some exposure for his music. So, from Bunny Kill 2 onwards, Rajunin handled the soundtracks. But, unlike Madness, a choice was made to keep Bunny Kill free of any running storyline or proper continuity. Dead characters return, allegiances change, settings and themes are totally different each episode. They may be titled Bunny Kill 1 through 5, but these animations were a total sandbox. 
This was a decision made with the simple motivation of allowing Modus to do whatever I want and I wouldn't have to worry about continuity. It's also fun doing new things with old characters, like having the twist in Bunny Kill 3 about Smoke being a good guy instead. Beyond taking inspiration from madness, opportunities were found to tie in other personal favorites of Modus. We can see laser style swords like Star Wars, the Morpheus-ish Kung Fu rabbit named Flint, Dragon Ball Z style power-ups, Naruto-like action, giant mech fighters, and more. Modus was able to share another influence that didn't quite make the cut. While he can't remember why it was scrapped, he originally wanted to pay tribute to Ninja Gaiden Black for Bunny Kill 4. I actually planned to include a weapon from that called Debilero. I genuinely googled how to pronounce that and it came up with zero results. Debilero, that's what I'm going with. And Modus would have called it the Bunny Lero instead, basically a massive two-handed sword. For the individual episodes when Modus was feeling stuck, he would often hang out with his friend Jaco. Modus felt that he understood the series well and was a useful contributor when it came time to brainstorm ideas. Jaco is even credited as writing the stories of episodes 2 and 3 as well as the second part of episode 5, which Modus had found especially hard to crack. The first three episodes all included kill counters in the corner to track how many bunnies had been bashed, beaten, and bruised thus far. While working on each episode, Modus would update his new grounds page with a current kill count of the upcoming episode to give fans a sense of how much progress he was making. However, at some point during the production of episode 4, he made the decision to do away with it. As he wrote in an old Newgrounds post, I'm ditching the kill counter for this movie, for reasons I'm not going into. He never did address that more directly, so I thought this interview would be a perfect opportunity to ask. However, Modus shared that he honestly couldn't remember his exact reasoning but suspected it felt like needless clutter, and took focus off the animation that he was painstakingly animating frame by frame. Modus shared how much he loved animating in those early years, working straight through the day, hardly noticing how much time had passed, often blowing past meals. Back then, I could pump out a movie in a month or so, as I did with Bunny Kill 2, I believe. But as time went on, I found less and less enjoyment in animating, and spending time doing it felt like a chore. And I don't want to romanticize the idea of skipping meals. Please don't let that be a lesson that you take away here, that you need to sacrifice your well-being for the sake of your craft. If anything, this acts as a bit of a cautionary tale that you need to be looking after yourself first, or else any long-term development is unsustainable. As you comb through those old Newgrounds posts for Bunny Kill, the series appears to have taken a slow but measurable toll on Modus's mental health and general well-being. And to his credit, he never once treated his fans poorly and never made any big public scenes. He recognized that his fans simply loved what he was making and never blamed them for that. But it was once again the all-too-common story of a Flash series becoming an obligation for the creator. Bunny Kill was something he started in his teens as a fun animation test, and I'm sure that success was exciting at first, but was very quickly followed by a pressure to make more, and more, and a need to always outdo the last. That can easily become a struggle even for veteran creators. Now, after only the third installment, Modus replied to one comment mentor stating, I feel like it's my duty to animate some bunny kill every day, and when I can't, I feel like I've disappointed my fans, and I start getting really mad at myself. Plans had been laid out for both a prequel to Bunny Kill 5 and a brand new Bunny Kill 6 before its formal cancellation and full series retirement was announced. Modus had taken an extended break from Newgrounds animating and all things Bunny Kill, and through that time to himself, the burden was lifting and Modus discovered that he hadn't actually felt relaxed in a long time. There was always the lingering thought tucked deep in my head. I need to get back to work. I need to keep working on Bunny Kill. I need to. I have to. I must. There's no escape. 
No matter how long of a break I take, I can't shake the feeling of being chained like this. It's always there, causing anxiety and stress. I'm confident most creators can relate to this. I did weekly uploads on this channel for about two years, and when I was forced to take some time off, I felt deeply guilty about it. But in that time, I was able to reflect back and realize I needed to figure out a better work-life balance. It's ongoing, but almost anyone in a creative field I think could benefit from looking back at their most recent week and thinking to themselves, did you genuinely take time for yourself and relax at any point? And the answer for far too many of us is no, so I always want to advocate for people looking after themselves. So in that regard, I'm really impressed that someone as young as Modus, at this point in his animating career trajectory, was able to recognize that he needed to look after himself. The fun was squeezed out of it, the flashes of inspiration less spontaneous, and in general he found the spark to be gone. Following his big announcement, many other prominent creators like Gabriel Barsh, John Bro, K Jinx, Chaz Dude, and Crinkles himself expressed their support. It's a difficult thing to publicly end a series, especially while in the middle of creating a new episode. It can be a difficult thing to let go, to get out from under it, and free yourself from that looming workload. Luckily, it seems Modus is proud of what he made, and even has a personal favorite looking back. I'm really proud of Bunnykill 5.2. Everything I wanted from that episode, I managed to do spectacularly. With all the trouble I had with motivation and depression at the time, at least I can say I ended the series on a high note. That final episode felt representative of the best of his abilities, and now, with a vastly improved mental health, will easily stand by that decision. A fan asked the simple but important question, are you doing well? To which Modus responded, Yep, I haven't had one of those waves of depression in years. I feel like getting a full-time job and streaming on Twitch has had a big part in that since I connect with people a lot more these days. Backing things up, I want to look a little bit behind the scenes. What was the process like for Modus, planning a new episode, animating it, as well as some other small details on the creator himself? That was sprinkled into the last section, and we'll hopefully unpack it a little more clearly here. I'm always interested to hear how someone first started out animating. I've been into it since I was a kid. My mom had tons of books, and I'd use the corners of the book pages to draw tiny animations, flipbook style. She had like 50 books, and eventually I'd drawn animations on every single of the four corners, front and back. At first, she hated when I did that, but then she kind of just let me do it. Starting out with flipbook-style animating is incredibly common, but I've never heard of anyone doing it in the corners of literal novels. Shout out to Modus's mom for seemingly being super chill. Later on, I got an Amiga 500, which had a drawing program, which also included an animation feature. Only problem was that Amiga's memory capabilities were so bad that I could only draw a handful of frames before it would run out of memory. I had to make the frames super small, pixelated stick figures basically, to to make an animation of any decent length. I never made any fighting animations with it though, just some random stuff like stick figures dancing. I wish I still had the Amiga and the discs, but we sold them off when I was still kinda young. Then years later, I tried animating in Flash on my friend's PC, got frustrated because I didn't know how to use the program, gave up, gave it another try a few days later, and made just another stick fight. In a Newgrounds post, a user asked what Modus's character creation process was like. Did he spend time sketching things out first, or how much did he tweak designs before he was satisfied? It's a large question, so I didn't expect such a straightforward answer. The process is pretty much just two steps. One, come up with a character in my head. Two, recreate the said character in Flash. Drawing in Flash is so, so much easier than in any other program or on paper in my opinion, since you can drag and mold any line or shape at any time as much as you want. 
I think this is fairly atypical, at least in my experience, but it does make sense considering the origins of this series. If he was simply running an animation test, trying out moving body parts, there'd be no reason to sketch things out first. And since you don't have to worry about ink or erasers, you can just draw and redraw until it feels right. And while the characters may have transferred directly from mind to screen, Modus did grow to learn the value of some additional planning. Yet, he never went so far as to use fully timed and plotted storyboards. He told me that the main plot points lived in his head, and that rarely did he ever write any of it down. Animating the action all started out with purely random kills, but with each additional movie, more kills would be planned in batch sequences. I never planned the full scene ahead of time because then animating that would be boring since I already knew what I was going to do and then I'd just follow through the motions. I wanted to keep it interesting and think on the spot a bit. Take a few steps, animate a few kills, then plan the next few kills, rinse and repeat. A fan asked what Modus's first steps were towards being an artist and storyteller, and despite starting out animating those flipbooks quite young, he never really viewed himself as such. And the deeper he got into animating, so many of his creations were so action-driven, it's somewhat understandable that there'd be a disconnect between the idea of himself and being a storyteller. But upon reflection, he did share. I can't even count the number of characters, monsters I've come up with throughout my life. I did draw some comics too though, so I guess there is some storyteller in me. That separation of doodling and story is perhaps why Modus struggled with laying out narratives and chose to keep it up in his head. Several old news posts document Modus's recurring writer's block, struggling to plan the next big piece of choreography. I wanted to know if he had any go-to tricks to unblock and push through. I even pointed out an old post where he said he used to try to animate at least three hours a day. He was kind of aghast at that number, viewing that as being an unrealistic goal and is surprised that he ever put himself through that. But looking at it now, there was no solution. I just kept going and animating. I wanted to always keep kills and the choreography fresh, which felt impossible at some points. There were times when I simply wasn't happy with the way things were going and I'd delete large chunks of the animation because of it. I had the bar set up way too high for myself and I only ever proceeded if I could reach that bar. I always tried to outdo my previous works as well. One of the craziest details I learned reading through those old Newgrounds news posts was what he had to say on the implementation of ear physics. As with nearly every small detail in animation, there's way more work behind it than you'd think. Similar to Madness, the entire workflow is centered around moving these body parts individually, small, micro distances at a time, thousands of times over. But a new level of complexity, one that I had never considered, comes from the inclusion of those cute little bunny ears. The action simply wouldn't look right if they remained rigid or fixated in place. Modus quickly learned that it was too time consuming and came out wonky if they were animated in tandem with everything else. Waiting until the end meant the ears could fully follow and react to the flow, momentum, and physics of each movement. So adding in and animating the ears was among his last steps after all the action had already been completed. Look at these little earless freaks. I should be used to seeing that plain chrome dome design thanks to Madness, but with their bunny faces and big eyes without any ears, it makes them look like freaky little aliens. And freaky little alien kill is nowhere near as catchy of a name. Across the five episodes, there really isn't a single thing that didn't improve. The character designs, art style, sound and visual effects, action, staging and execution, all of it. But one aspect I especially loved that I think added a lot to each entry was the highly detailed, clean backgrounds. They are stylish, polished, unobtrusive to the action, always adding to each scene rather than causing any distraction. I was never a fan of drawing backgrounds. In fact, that's one part that I was never happy with. 
It was a less enjoyable process than the other parts of animating for me, and in my opinion, it shows. The only movie where I actually enjoyed creating the backgrounds was in Bunny Kill 5.1 and .2. And that's because once I had built all the pieces and props, I could build stages out of them easily, piece by piece, like in a video game. That was lots of fun. As someone who personally hates drawing backgrounds, I can relate strongly to this. And honestly, the idea of making his own tile sets to build the background of Bunny Kill 5 is incredibly smart. The way he layered in other details completely hides any repetition that might otherwise be noticed. In his later years of animating, Modus went through many highs and lows of motivation. Sometimes seeing a well-made action movie would reignite something but that never lasted long. He had stopped watching online animations of any kind as they only made him feel bad and that he wasn't as good as those around him, destroying the limited motivation he may have had at that time. Luckily, that is not an issue for him today. I love seeing well-made animations now since I'm no longer comparing my own work to them. He also told me that in those later years, he felt in a rut more often than not, especially towards the end. That's when it became clear it was time to leave it behind. With it now being nearly 10 years removed from the Bunny Kill series, I wanted to ask point blank. Knowing how hard he pushed himself, setting the bar as high as he did, how does looking back on all of that make him feel now? I had a lot of fun, and back then I thought that animation would be my future. But thinking about those times also brings back some bad memories, mainly regarding the constant stress I went through back then. Bittersweet would be the best way to describe it. I mentioned early that work had been done on both a Bunny Kill 5 prequel and Bunny Kill 6. We have no real footage of either, so I'll have to rely on the existing Bunny Kill movies for the visual accompaniment. But we did have a fair amount of details about these movies, now filled in further from Modus himself. When first discussing these potential installments back in 2011, Modus felt more excited by the idea of making the prequel, eager to fit in ideas he had no room for in Bunny Kill 5. The story would be rather simple, it would just show how Dust got captured in the first place. The Doctor would play a slightly bigger part, and I would also present a completely new character who was already referenced in Bunny Kill 5. I also have a nifty idea for Dust's weapon that would add a lot to the choreography, yet be very different from what was in Bunny Kill 5. And finally, I could follow up on that here for a first ever public description of what he had in mind. In the prequel, instead of a cannon, the sword's secondary function would have been a hook shot instead, where Dust can fire the blade on a chain and then pull it back. It made for some fun kills and moves that were not previously possible. Then describing how the continuity would have played out from episode point zero to point one, he would have had Sludge upgrading the weapon to a cannon for point one, which makes perfect sense story-wise since it's clearly an upgrade even though it's functionally more boring afterwards. This was one of the main things that really motivated me to make a 5.0 instead of number six. Too bad I could never make that weapon a reality. Besides time saved by reusing assets from Bunny Kill 5, Modus was mostly just excited to expand on Dust's story while also adding to the other minor characters. I also had an idea for a new antagonist called Scratch, Professor Sludge's new living experiment who's basically this unkempt looking bunny with dark fur, long claws, and crazy eyes. He has a constant bloodlust that drives him to indiscriminately kill everything around in a mad frenzy. He was supposed to be the tool that Smoke and Sludge used to defeat and capture Dust, and Smoke would dispose of him afterwards, which explains why he's not in the sequels. So he had quite a bit in mind for that movie, although same as before, he would have improvised the kills themselves that fit in between those major plot points. While Bunny Kill 6 only ever had a brainstorming session or two. With Modus's confidence that he would do the prequel first, he had never given it a lot of thought, summing up all his ideas many years ago in a reply to a fan, back when he was planning to make both movies. I already have a theme in mind. I was thinking a gothic, Devil May Cry, Castlevania kind of style, with a heavier emphasis on Snowball killing monster-like creatures rather than bunnies. The action would be balls-to-the-wall crazy too, kinda like the enraged Snowball from Bunny Kill 4. However, there is one thing to note, 
and reiterating why this wasn't his priority. I would have to build everything from the ground up, including the story, characters, enemies, new weapons, effects, background, etc, etc. This will take a long time compared to the prequel, where I have most of the graphics already done. When asking about any further details on that concept, Modus shared that he never made a single sketch or did any further planning for Bunny Kill 6, other than what already existed in his head. In that very same thread discussing future projects, a fan expressed that they were hoping to see a pirate-themed episode. And Modus shared at the time, I actually had the idea to make a pirate bunny kill a long, long time ago, but I scrapped the idea because I simply can't think of good choreographies for a pirate theme. There's simply not enough different weapons available, swords, a gun that takes ages to reload, um, that's it? Additional ideas that he can recall include a Wild West-themed episode, and an eventual full remake of Bunny Kill 1, brought up to his own modern standard. Outside of those unrealized movie ideas, and considering the popularity of projects like Madness Interactive, I imagine others out there would be curious as to why we never saw a Bunny Kill game. Modus has avoided answering that in the past, but shared now that it wasn't for a lack of trying. He had attempted to get a few off the ground, but none that ever saw the light of day. The projects failing were mostly my fault. I'm not a game designer, yet I wanted full control on the gameplay mechanics, which ended up being mediocre in the end. Lots of time spent on things that didn't work out. I still feel lousy about this, especially since I wasted other people's time with these projects that were doomed from the beginning. I hope he and anyone watching can take comfort in knowing how common that is. I started at least five times more games than I ever finished. We were all teenagers running wild with infinite ideas. It's no surprise that heaps of self-taught and self-disciplined game developers would struggle now and again. Seriously though, I'm kinda happy that I managed to finish it on a high note. I'm really proud of how Bunny Kill 5.2 turned out, and I couldn't imagine a better farewell for the series. This is a bit of a non sequitur, but I needed to find somewhere to talk about Doofy. This is a small project Modus made after the first Bunny Kill, shortly before going all in on that series. It's actually super impressive that he managed to submit three complete projects in just the first two months of 2005, and all of them are pretty damn polished. I wanted to bring this game up here because it ties into both my new grounds history and that of Puffballs United, in a way that will be clear if you saw my video on the Henry Stickman series. For some quick context, Doofy is this monochrome Rayman-like character, probably closer in design to Thing Thing than to Madness or his very own Bunny Kill series. And just like that original Crossing the Pit or Breaking the Bank, as well as my own Kill Bow series, all that Doofy is is a handful of simple animations controlled by these buttons in a main menu, all of which end in poor Doofy getting killed. It's straightforward, uses many of the same free sound samples Puff and I also made use of back then, And heck, the first option in both Doofy and Kill Bo involves falling off a generic cliff. My favorite part of all this, and why I insisted in including a Doofy tangent at all, this simple project predates Kill Bo, Crossing the Pit, and Thing Thing. All of those are simply interesting examples of convergent creativity being inspired by similar sources. Layer in the fact that simple buttons and basic character designs are some of the earliest things you learn in Flash, and it's not surprising so many creators start out in such similar ways. Maybe someday I need to do a video simply discussing the many simplistic early projects that came from eventual prominent Flash developers. I bet I could have a lot of fun with that. As I'm sure many of you saw, as long as YouTube actually notified people, maybe you should subscribe and hit the notification bell just to be safe. I uploaded an HD cut of the Bunny Kill series to YouTube just the other day. A few uploads like this have existed on YouTube, but never compiled at this quality. Asking Modus why he never did that himself, by the time YouTube was relevant, I already was at a point where I wanted to distance myself from the series. I didn't want to do anything to reignite people's interest in the series. Basically, I didn't care. What a crazy reminder that is, that these animations are older than YouTube. He's okay with this upload being made now, I made sure to get his permission, and so I've made that available with monetization turned off so you can enjoy it without interruption. It didn't feel right to earn money off someone else's work, and I hope that you would simply pay that forward by checking out Magenta Horizon on Steam. Please do take a moment to go wishlist that game, test out the free Act 1, challenge yourself to get some triple S ranks against those bosses, and let us know what you think. Add free bunny kill and a free demo of a game. I think that's a fair exchange.
Back when Modus was putting in long hours animating, he decided to try streaming on Twitch. He seemed to enjoy it, but only ever did that once or twice. So his archives of that are long gone. He hadn't streamed in about a decade, but a few years back started playing games on Twitch as a hobby. He's emphasized that he's not doing it for fame or money, so he doesn't care to promote it very much. And he described his relationship with Bunny Kill up to this point as being pretty well cold turkey. He was obviously willing to discuss it now, but he did emphasize that he doesn't want his Twitch streams to turn into big bunny kill Q&As. So if you do choose to check him out, please engage with Modus as a person and as a gamer, not as an animator. He doesn't want to talk about bunny kill or his past animations while he's streaming. There's a lot of baggage there, and it's not something he really wants to unpack while having fun hanging around on a stream. He did say you could, however, ask him in his Discord. I will have links to both in the description, and please do respect his wishes, keeping the conversation relevant to the forum he asks. He said of streaming that it's the best thing that has happened to me in a long time. He's able to use it to kill time, practice his English, and meet new people. And if you're curious what sorts of games he plays, he's a massive FromSoft fan, and some of his all-time favorite games include Hollow Knight, Darkwood, Salt and Sanctuary, Prey, and the Final Fantasy VII Remake. For his actual job, he works as an industrial insulator and metal sheet blacksmith. That's pretty hardcore, and he says he actually really likes his job. At one point in our interview, he defined success as being happy and content with your life. Find what you truly enjoy in life and do that. And honestly, it sounds like he's found it. Be sure to wishlist Magenta Horizon, go hang out with Modus in his Twitch chat, and thank you all for watching. I hope to see you again soon.